G'day and welcome to another YouTube lesson. Today we're going to take a look at classification of business. And we've looked at this over a few lessons. This is the last one we'll look at in terms of classifying a business. Now, remember what classification of business is about. There are four, one, two, three, four, four main ways to classify a business, to put it in its box, its category, its place. All right, when someone asks you about classifying a business, being able to describe the business. You don't just say, oh, it's this or it's that. You must use these four things that we're going to talk about briefly in a sec to be able to classify that business. The first one is size. You know, is it a small, a medium, a large business? That's a, that's a good way to be able to describe the business to someone who wants to know a bit more about it. The next one is based on scale. Another way to categorize is based on scale. Now it doesn't say scale in the syllabus, naughty, naughty syllabus. But when it talks about the area in which the business sells to, whether it be the local, it's the local scale, or the national, selling interstate, the national scale, or is it selling globally? Is it selling on a global scale? So that next way to classify the business is based on scale. Now. The third way to classify a business is based on the sector of the economy that the business is. Is it mining or farming? And it's in the primary sector. Are we talking about the secondary sector and manufacturing? Or is it service-based and it's in the tertiary sector? These are all, again, very good ways to classify a business. The final way to classify a business, which is what we're looking at today, is legal structure. And there are five different types of legal structures. And we're going to be looking at the last one today, government enterprise. But the other ways to classify a business under the, stru the legal structure an owner will choose is to have a sole trading business, to have a partnership, or to set up a private company, PTY LTD, or to have a publicly listed company, LTD, the end of the business or the, the company in that instance, Okay, and have it listed, floated on the ASX. Now, this final fifth way we're spending time on today is through, uh, it's called a government business enterprise or a government enterprise. All right, now, government enterprises are government owned and operate. They're also known as government business enterprises, as I mentioned earlier, GBEs. Now, this small in number, there's only 5,000 of them, and that might sound like a lot, but it's not. Small and medium enterprises make up a huge chunk of the market share of businesses in Australia. And private and public companies, uh, they make up mostly the rest. And with a small sort of segment of that market being GBEs. So you can imagine how many businesses there are in Australia if 5,000 is a small amount, but, but it is a small section of the total business market and company market in Australia. They are, though, typically large in size. Not many of them, but they're large in size. And include some of the largest, they are some of the largest employers of people in Australia. I myself were employed by a GBE, Department of Education, along with a hundred odd thousand other teachers in New South Wales, one of the largest employers in the Southern Hemisphere. GBEs are owned and operated by all three levels of government, the federal, the state, and the local. A local council. Some examples, as I said, include Department of Education, Department of Health, Rail Corp, Sydney Water. They're all government business enterprises owned and run by our wonderful government. Sometimes not so wonderful. Maybe we'll stick with the Prime Minister one day. Some of Australia's largest GBEs, they've undergone this process called privatisation. Now, <coughs> privatisation is a little bit of a sort of tricky thing. Privatisation is when you sell off a GBE to the private sector, to private investors. Now, I'm going to go and explain to you um, the difference between the public sector and the private sector. And it's very confusing when we talk about the public sector and the private sector, because kids think of private companies and public companies. And logically, you'd go, OK, private company equals private sector. Well, it does, that's correct. The public company, oh, it says public, it equals public sector. Wrong. It's 
slap on my hand. No, the public companies, they're part of the private sector as well. So you have on one side here, the private sector, you have private companies and public companies under the private sector. You also have sole traders and partnerships under that, the private sector. On the other hand, you have the public sector. The public sector doesn't have public companies. It has government owned businesses. These ones we're talking about today, government business enterprises, GBEs. Okay, because with the private sector, the average person can own these particular businesses or companies. A public company, sure, I can own. In fact, I do. Okay, some of uh, the public companies, like Telstra, ANZ, and so on, because you can buy into those on the ASX. You can set up, buy into a private company. There's more conditions, but you can. You can set up a sole trading business. So, and the same with partnership. So you've got access to owning that. That's why it's the private, private sector individuals can do it. The public sector, it's government only. Public in this instance means government. So public sector are GBEs. So we're talking here with privatization, back to the point at hand. Privatization is when a public sector business or company called a GBE, owned and operated by the government, when it's sold from the public sector to the private sector. Now, I can't think of an example where it's not sold as a publicly listed company. So remember, a public sector company called a GBE, like Telstra is a good example, they sold that to the private sector. And well, how do they sell it? Well, they go and float it, list it on the ASX, the Australian Stock Exchange. Okay, and then that becomes a public company. Remembering public companies, your mum, your dad, your nan, whoever, uh, me even, can um, purchase shares in this and can own it, hence it's now in the private sector. All right, now why would the government want to privatise these GBEs? And that could be a question in your yearly exam. For two reasons they want to privatise it. I'm not a big advocate necessarily on privatisation, but there are, I guess there are some, some pros, some benefits of it. The first one is that you think Telstra was owned 100% by the Australian federal government. By selling it, it generates billions and billions of dollars that can then be spend, spent on other infrastructure projects, building road, rail. Uh, we also call things asset recycling, where we're selling uh, Telstra and we are then building new road and rail, which we then can on sell again and then build something else. So it's generating infrastructure within your economy, within your country. That's the theory behind it anyhow. The second thing is, and I kind of partially agree with this, and they're inefficient. I'll give you an example. Stuff run by the government's not probably run well. Um, because what happens is you'll have a budget in each department, each area. And they'll say this particular faculty in a school, you've got $30,000. And you might have, I don't know, a month to go to the end of the, the budget cycle. And I'll say, right, dude, <clears throat> miss, whatevs, uh, you've got five, you've got a month to spend that last $5,000 or you don't spend it, you lose it. And I hear that saying all the time, spend it or lose it. And if you don't spend it, sure, you lose it. But worse than that, they might go consistently. You only spend $25,000 of your $30,000. We're only going to give you 25 grand in future. So there's this, you know, this idea here that you must spend all of your budget. There's no payoff. There's no benefit in the public sector usually for being tight, for being frugal and not spending the money like there is in the private sector. In the private sector, they get rewarded bosses for coming under budget, whereas with um, the public sector, with government business enterprises, that's not that's not the case. Okay, so um, that's the other thing. They're inefficient, public sector companies, GBEs. Now, in terms of another concept you need to get, it's called corporization. Corporization. It's like privatization without privatization. And that's often how it's phrased. It's privatizing without privatizing. What do you do there? Well, instead of selling off your government business enterprise, what you do is you appoint a CEO to run it ruthlessly like 
a private sector business, like a public company or something else in the private sector. So people do get rewarded if a GBE has been corporized for coming under budget, for having cost savings, for generating greater profits and so on. And we're seeing more and more corporization of our government business enterprises. And, um, you know, something like Australia Post, we're seeing along those lines. They're generating sometimes, depending on the division of Australia Post, lots of money. All right. So as I said before, corporization is when a GB is not sold off, but it's treated much like a private sector business. Okay. Now, during the 1990s, the federal government, they privatized a number of public sector businesses. Some examples of these include OSAT, which is the Domestic Satellites Operator. And you're going, what, I've never heard of that before. You will have, it's now called Optus. So Optus have purchased OSAT in the 90s and they're able to get into the market uh, and be a competitor to Telstra. Qantas, you may have heard of that little airline. That was also owned by the government fully owned by the government, that has been privatised and sold off. Commonwealth Bank used to be owned by the government in the 90s. It's been sold off. Telstra has also been sold off as well. It's been privatised by the government. Okay, now that's GBEs, but I'm going to have a quick chat to you about a franchise. It's in some of the textbooks. It's probably not going to be in your exam, but I have a bit of an idea about what a franchise is. You'll know of some, like Macca's is a good example. A lot of our fast food places, Pizza Hut, they're all franchises too. Now, what is a franchise? Under a franchise agreement, a person uh, buys the rights to use the business's name and distribute the goods or service of an existing business. The business that grants the rights to others to use its name and product is known as a franchise or. So the owner of the the franchising total set of business, the big, big owner is the franchise or the business that buys those rights is known as the franchise E. So if you own one or two shops of that, it's known as a franchisee. The franchiser, they're the ones who own the rights, the intellectual property. Okay. They supply a known advertised business's name, the required training and staff development and the method of doing the management and skills. All right, as I said, some examples of this include McDonald's, uh, Optus World, Wendy's, and so on. Thanks for listening, guys, and see you next time. Goodbye.